Now, what is worry? We all know what it is. I can say the word worry, and you can instantly almost feel in your chest what worry feels like, but, but what is worry? Well, that's actually pretty simple. Here's what worry is. Worry is a conditioned or chosen anxious response to uncertainty. So if there's something uncertain, could be lying in present reality, could be lying somewhere in the future, worry is an anxious response to the fact that you're facing something that's uncertain. Now, this response is something that's either conditioned or chosen. What do I mean by that? Number one, you could choose to worry in the face of uncertainty. You say, why would I choose to worry on purpose? Because there's something in our minds that thinks, if I think about all the bad things that could happen, then I won't be surprised when it happens. And it gives the illusion of you somehow being in control of the uncertainty that you're facing, so you choose to worry. You choose an anxious response to something uncertain in your reality. Or it's a conditioned response. Maybe you grew up in a home where your mom worried about everything, and growing up in that home, you just learned that's how you respond to life. That's how you deal with life. You worry about everything. Or maybe that wasn't your background, but there is a season of life where you went through just a, a string of tough knocks, and you just picked up the habit, because that's what worry is. It's a habit. It's a behavior, and that became your conditioned response. When there's something uncertain in my world, I just start to worry about it, when I see that happen. Now, here's the problem. Uncertainty isn't going to go away, okay? Because certainty only lies in the past or in the future. In the past, you can look back and now you're certain what you should have done. In the future, you'll get to certainty at some point perhaps, but right now, there's uncertainty in the present. In fact, the one thing I'm certain about is you will always be uncertain. I promise you that. I'm certain of it. But that's part of the human condition. What is not part of the human condition is that you must worry about uncertainty. You can choose whether or not you're going to worry. Today, Mary is going to show us how to choose a different path how to look at an environment that is uncertain and rather than choose worry, choose anticipation, excitement. I'm uncertain about this reality, but rather than fill in that gap of uncertainty with worry and anxiety, I'm going to fill it in with, wow, God must be up to something amazing. I can't wait to see this unfold because I trust him. Mary's going to show us how to turn that corner so that all of us can learn how to live with less worry and more excitement and more anticipation. Now, I'm going to give you the solution up front, okay? I'm going to give you the big idea up front. And the reason why is because this sounds like preacher talk, what I'm going to show you. I'm going to say, here's the big idea. Don't forget this. And, and I'm going to read it. And you are going to roll your eyes like a teenager and go, ah. Uh. Okay, that's what you're going to want to do because you're going to be like, that is so preachery. That doesn't work in the real world. But I'm, I promise you, this is what works in the real world. And I'm going to, so go ahead and cross your arms. But I'm going to spend the rest of the time demonstrating this to you. Whether you're a Christian or not, this is how you deal with worry. Worship is the antidote to worry. Worship is the antidote to worry. Now, that depends. We have to define this word worship if this is going to make any sense, because for many of us, worship means you sing some songs in church. Well, that might be an expression of worship, but worship at its roots is deeper than that. Here's what I mean by worship. To worship, now this, this is what you came for right here. To worship is to align our thoughts and then our emotions. It is to align our thoughts first and then our emotions with the reality of God as he actually is. It is to take our thinking and ground it in the reality of God as he actually exists, and then to align our emotions with the reality of God as he actually is. And the secret that Mary's going to show us to combating worry in your life is to align your thoughts and then your emotions with God as he actually is. Now, for this to have any benefit for you guys today, it's going to have to be very practical. 
And what that means is I'm going to ask you to do something, to bring to the front of your mind what it is that has you worried right now. Is there something that kept you awake at night this week? What is it? Is there something where you find your thoughts drifting there during the day when you're not busy working on something or doing something? What is it? Bring those one or two, maybe three things to the front of your mind and very clearly identify them. Because our task today is to take those realities that will still have uncertainty when you walk out these doors, but the worry can stay right here in the room while you leave. That's what we're going to work on today. And we're going to learn that worship is the antidote to worry. We're going to align our thoughts and then our emotions with the reality of God as He actually is. So let's see how Mary teaches us uh, this from her life today. Last week when Gabriel left Mary, he dropped a hint. He said, your relative Elizabeth is pregnant in her old age. You might want to go visit her. So Mary picks up the hint and goes to visit Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah and Elizabeth's home and greeted Elizabeth. Now, uh, Mary's from Nazareth. The hill country of Judea was a big region of, of desolate area. Uh, we don't know exactly how far, but it would have been at least 75 miles away. And because it's the hill country, yes, she had to walk uphill. So she had a 75-mile walk uphill to go and visit her relative, Elizabeth, in the sixth month of her pregnancy. And she, of course, is pregnant with John the Baptist. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings... The baby in her womb, when, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So Mary comes to the door, knock, knock, it's Mary, Elizabeth is inside, and she's six months pregnant with John the Baptist. And Elizabeth has this baby in her womb leap, and Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, that's a key detail that Luke gives us right here to say she's filled with the Holy Spirit. She's not filled with emotions. She's not filled with hormones. She's filled with the Holy Spirit, the presence of God himself giving her wisdom and insight and being spirit-filled. This is what she did. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Now, right out of the gate, this would have been surreal for Mary. This was a culture where the younger always honored and deferred to the older. But Elizabeth, the older, honors and defers to the younger. Why would she do that? Because she says, you are the mother of of my Lord. Before she said a word, Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, says, you are carrying my Lord and Savior. Why am I so honored that you, the mother of my Lord, would come to me? So already, Mary would have had her breath taken away by this relevatory statement from Elizabeth. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Now, this, this is an aside. This isn't the main point, but, but it's right here in the text, so, so I have to draw attention to this. Jesus loves little children. Throughout the biographies of his life, Jesus dug kids. He loved kids, and kids loved being around him. And right here, we have a child who is six months in utero loving Jesus right back. Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, when Mary walks in the room, when Jesus walks in the room, little John the Baptist jumps with joy and says, Jesus is in the house. Yeah. And he starts a worship service right there. And Elizabeth is like, wow, he's worshiping my Lord because his mother just entered the room. Jesus loves little children, and little children right here love him right back. Here's why this matters. It's because unborn children matter to God. Unborn children matter to Jesus. We cannot call them a clump of cells. This is a worshiper of God right here that Elizabeth is carrying. 
honoring and loving and enjoying the presence of Jesus. And Elizabeth, filled with the Spirit, declares this to Mary. In her final words, in her greeting, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Over and over, Elizabeth is calling her blessed. What does that mean? The word means fulfilled, satisfied, contented, happy, joyed. If you have ever, ever, ever prayed, God, I need your blessing, Elizabeth says, Mary shows us the path to be blessed by God. And the path is to believe that the Lord would fulfill his promises. See, this is part of worship. We're aligning our thoughts and expectations around the promises of God. God as he actually is, what he has actually promised to do. And he never promised Mary, you get to script your life out, Mary, and then those are the lines you get to read. That's not God's promise. God's promise is, I will never leave you or forsake you. And you believe his promises, Mary. That's why you are blessed by God. Now, Mary shows up. Elizabeth declares these things. And in the next verse, we're going to see that this changes everything for Mary. All of the worry she might still be carrying evaporates. It's replaced with all kinds of excitement and anticipation. Okay, think about all the uncertainty she's facing All these things can still happen. Joseph can still leave her. She can still be called a tramp. She can still be a single mom in the first century world she lives in. But all of the worry evaporates, and she's going to be filled with excitement and anticipation. But I need you to see the catalyst that triggered it, because we need the same thing today. Here's the catalyst that triggered all of it for her. It was Christian community. Christian community is a catalyst for worship. She needed to be in the presence of another believer in God who could speak truth about who God is into her life, and that ignited something in her soul. Now, think of what Mary had to go through to be in community. She had to, the pregnant teenage girl from Nazareth, walk 75 miles uphill to Zachariah's house to go be in community. Think about what you need to do if you are going to also enjoy Christian community. Well, if you're here at Hope Church, you join a group. And then, if you're going to go be in a group, it starts with finding your car keys. That's a hassle, am I right? And then you have to get in your car, and some of us don't have heated seats. Ah. You've got to drive five, six, seven miles to someone's house, and then you have to walk 50 or 100 feet to their front door to be in Christian community. And Mary's like, I will walk 50 to 100 miles to be in Christian community. Some of us, it's not even that hard. You're in group through Zoom. And do you know what you have to do to be in Christian community like Mary was? You have to find that email from three days ago that had the Zoom link. That's a hassle. Find your device or your computer. You have to be fully clothed from the waist up. Come on. You're the one who, who, who has to choose. Because what happens, maybe it's just me, maybe you're immune from this. In isolation, when facing uncertainty, the voice in the head starts talking and we start filling in those gaps with everything that could go wrong and everything that could be negative and the worry starts to settle in and what begins as a choice becomes a conditioned response and it's not until someone else who loves God and loves you says, yeah, but let me tell you something about who God is that it snaps our thinking back into place and our thoughts and then our emotions are realigned with the reality of God as he actually is. Hey everyone, my name is James and I'm on staff here at Hope Church and I just want to say thank you for checking out that last video. If you found that content helpful, please let us know by hitting that like button and be sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you get notified every time we go live or post new content. We do live stream our services every Sunday starting at 825 Central. We have a growing online community that we would love for you to come and be a part of. And if you have any more questions about us here at Hope Church, be sure to check out the links down below.